Hi everyone, Paul here, so welcome back to just another dang how to channel. So on this video, we're going to learn how to install PG Admin. So a while back, about a year ago, uh, I created a video on how to install Postgres uh, app and that would install the Postgres SQL. So that only comes with a command line. It doesn't come with a GUI. So in this video, we're going to show you how to install PG Admin and manipulate the items on that GUI. Let's go. So on this video, if you don't have Postgres SQL installed yet, you could follow this video that I did uh, way back and I'll leave the link on the description below on how to get the Postgres app. So starting from there, I already have the Postgres app installed on my machine. It's running and I have several uh, databases in here. But the problem is these are all based on command lines. So if you want a GUI, um, what you want is probably PG admin. So there's um, other GUI there for Postgres, but PG admin is um, very um, stable. So go to pgadmin.org and click on downloads. And here you have several versions on how do you want to install it, either container, Mac OS, Python script, uh, APT through APT or RPM, and also build from the source and also for Windows. So for the Mac, go under Mac. There's going to be a PNG version. So this is the latest version of, as of uh, last month, September 22. So I'm going to grab that and it should start downloading. Ah, click on the DMG here and it should start downloading. So I already have that downloaded on my machine. So once it's downloaded, just double click on the DMG file. It will open up this window. It would ask you to drag and drop the PG admin for into the applications folder. There you go. Now it's copying over to the applications folder. Cool. Once it's copied, you could close this down and open up PG Admin. So under applications, go under PG Admin 4. It's going to prompt you that this out app is downloaded from the internet. Everyone open it. This is just a security from Apple. So click on open. So first time you launch uh, Postgre uh, PG Admin for it would ask you for a master password. So go ahead, create a master password. And the first thing you want to do is connect to your local database. Make sure the Postgres, uh, uh, your Postgres SQL is running. Mine is already running. Um, so if it's not running, you could open it up and click on start. That should be it. And under here, we want to connect to our server. So because it's a local server only, it's only lock running locally, I could give this a name. So under general, give it the name. Say I could say it local host. Under connection, it needs the host name. So because it's only running locally, it's just host name. For the username, use the username that you created when you installed um, Postgres app. And if you added the password, add a password. For me, I didn't add a password because it's just local. And when I hit save, that should create this database in uh, this connection. It would show me all the databases on my app. So it should match the databases in here. So if you want to create a new database, you could right click and say create database. And from here, I'm going to say I'm going to create one just for this demo. Say so YouTube demo, click save. And you would see it says you're, uh, you're connected to that database. Uh, similarly, on Postgres, a new database should appear in there. Cool. Now, under the schema here, under public, you should see the tables here. There shouldn't be any tables because we haven't created one yet. So go ahead, right click and choose table. And here you could give a table name. So I'm going to create one very quickly. Just say users, very basic. And then on this table, you would see uh, under here, there's no columns as well. So we could create some columns. Right click and say columns. I'll give this an ID. And under definition here, these are all the data types that you could specify. So I'm just going to get big ID. If you're not familiar with the data types, uh, there's a documentation here from Postgres. SQL on all the different kinds of data types. I'll leave this uh, link on the description as well. So I'll do that. 
I'll create another column. Uh, one cool thing, let me close this. If you go under SQL tab here, and I start creating new fields, it would actually tell you the command it executed. So this time I'll say first name. For the definition, I'm going to say varying character. Uh, let's say 20 characters. And hit save. This is the command that I ran. So and then I have a new column in there. And then I'll do the same thing. Um, say last name. And then for the definition, say varying again say 20 characters cool that's it so now if I want to query this database I could right click on the users and see view edit data I could see all rows that's the same thing as saying select from public users and you see there's nothing in this database so if I want to insert a user I could also use a proper query tool so I could go to query tool here and I could say insert into users values and i could specify this say my name oops and um, end it with a semicolon and hit this command so shortcut is f5 if you have that configured uh, just hit f5 and say insert one and if i go back to this table and i say view all you can see that there's now one entry to that table. So uh, you could right click, drop some columns as well, or you could drop the whole table. Be careful here because you're running an admin, any table you drop would drop, uh, you, it can't be recovered unless you make a backup of it. Cool. So that's the quick, easy tutorial how to install PG Admin and get your head around uh, how to use it. Cool. Hope you like this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Cheers, bye for now.